Hello, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, it's Topaz Studio 2. I'm calling this one Exploring Detail. Now, I'm looking at three different filters that will help us add detail to our images today. And that would be AI Clear, Precision Contrast, and precision detail. So let's really take a close look at all three of those filters and see what they can do for us. So without any further ado, let's get started. The first filter that we're going to explore is AI Clear, and you'll find it in the Add Filter tab right here. So just click that and click on AI Clear. And pretty much like that, it's going to render this out with extra sharpening, and you are done right there. Let me click on the canvas here, left click with the mouse and hold it down. There's the before and there's the after. As you can see, it does a really good job. It reduces noise as well as sharpens your image all at one shot with just by selecting the filter and you are done. It's amazing. But there are adjustments in it. You have blend modes. You have, a, you have an opacity slider. You have remove noise. You have auto, low, medium, and high. And you can play with these if you'd like. But I just leave mine on auto and I'm finding that pretty much all the time it is just right on the money right there so I, that's what i do but if you were having some issues you could try it like if you felt it was doing too much noise reduction you could click it on low or medium if you felt it wasn't doing enough you could bump up to medium or high so whatever you prefer and if you felt you needed a little more sharpness you could click high here it's not going to add an insane amount of extra sharpness but if you felt you needed a little extra you could do it you have a recovered detail slider and I find this slider when you move it to the right it kind of softens the image a bit so if you felt your image was a little bit too crunchy you could kind of ease off on the uh, sharpness a little bit by moving that recovered details to the right at least that's the way it works for me and of course they give you an exposure slider here if you felt you needed to bump up the exposure I don't really use uh, AI clear for adjusting exposure but it's there if you needed a little bit of a boost in exposure and then we have a clarity slider so if you pull it to the right you can add some more clarity to your image or to the left take clarity out the next filter we're looking at is precision contrast which will add really beautiful contrast to your image and it'll break it down into different uh, regions and you'll see that here in a second uh, but it'll also add detail to your image as well. Now let me show you something real quick here. Let's go to Add Filter and let's get a Curves Filter. Now typically we'll add some contrast pop to our images with a Curves Filter and it's really a great way to add contrast. And I'll show you. It's, it's something called an S-Curve that we can do. So I'm going to click and add a point right here and drag up. These are the highlights of the image right here, the higher tones higher lights and then these are your more shadow areas over here I'm gonna put click and put a point here and drag down and that's putting an S curve on there but you notice how the contrast popped now let me click the eyeball here here's the before and after but you see the contrast in the image here but this is an overall contrast okay but precision contrast will break that up into different regions and I'll show you that right now I went ahead and got rid of the curves filter so we could come here and examine the precision contrast filter and see how it works differently so let's click add filter and come to precision contrast now we have the opacity slider in the blend modes like all the filters have but here we have contrast and we break it down into micro contrast, low contrast areas, medium contrast areas, and high contrast areas. And let's just pull these sliders and see what they do. So when we pull the micro to the right, you can see all the really minute areas of contrast are starting to pop. Or we can also move it to the left and, and soften those areas up or decrease contrast in the micro areas. Let's uh, double click micro. Now let's go to low. Now it's looking for lower areas of contrast. So let's pull it to the right and see what it's doing. And this is what, what I really highly recommend that you do so you can really see how your filters are working for you. But see now it's looking for a little larger areas of, um, of uh, contrast. Actually low areas but larger than micro. And then we can move that to the left as well. All right, now we'll double click low. And now we'll go to medium. So now it's looking for medium area. So let's pull this up. As you can see, it's picking up wider areas of contrast now. And that's looking really kind of nice. And we can pull it to the left as well if we want to uh, decrease contrast in the medium areas. Now let's go to the high areas of contrast. So this is going to be larger areas of contrast that's picking up. And you can see that there. And I can also pull it to the left. Let's go ahead and double click high and get it reset back. Now let's make an adjustment on this image here, okay? So the micro, as, you, as I told you earlier, it's dealing with a very small amounts of uh, contrast in your image. 
And the micro will actually add some detail to your image. So watch when I start to move this to the right. You see how the details of the image start to pop out, which is really cool. I really love the micro for just adding that little extra bump of detail there. Now the low, let's start playing with it. And don't be afraid to move these sliders around. So you, you know, and kind of watch your image and go back and forth. And when you get to a point where you think it looks really nice, just kind of stop there. And I'm stopping right there. Now I'm going to go to medium. So we can really just tweak every one of those ranges up, you know, micro, low, medium, and high. So let's see what we want to do here with this one. And sometimes I'll even go to the left if I feel it needs to be adjusted that way. But right there, now let's work on the high. Let's go ahead up now to the precision contrast layer and click the eyeball so we can see the before precision contrast. And now we'll click it again, and this is after precision contrast. So look at the detail and contrast that we added to our image. And we added that in a really beautiful way to the low areas of contrast, the micro areas of contrast, the medium, and the high areas of contrast. So that's pretty cool. After you've made your uh, precision contrast adjustments, you may find that your shadow areas got a little too dark and your highlight areas got a little bit too light, but not a problem. Let's come back up to precision contrast click on it and you'll notice inside here we have some lighting adjustments and this is really nice so if our shadows got blocked up we can move our shadows to the right a little bit and open our shadows up if our midtones needed lightened up we can lighten them up to the right or darken to the left whichever uh, look we're looking for let me just lighten them up just a little bit and maybe our highlights got a little too light we can ease off in those highlights by moving that back and that's really cool and now we come to the equalization here and we have three tabs, low, medium, and high. And basically what equalization does is it uh, equalizes the exposure of the image. So just click through those. Let's go on low and see what that looks like. Let's click on medium and let's click on high. And I'm, I'm going to cross between high and medium, so I'm just going to choose medium. I think that looks really nice. And then we have some color controls here. And you all know what a saturation control does and a vibrance control. But the color contrast is really special. What it does is, when you're using precision contrast, the uh, smaller detailed areas sometimes tend to lose a little bit of saturation, and the color contrast will bring that back. So watch when I move this color contrast to the right. See those smaller areas of detail, like the bird's eye right here and the top of the rooster here, and certain colors in these feathers. They're starting to pick up more saturation, but you notice the bricks back here are maintaining their saturation. So let's just double click uh, color contrast and set it back to the default position. And let's just slowly bump up color contrast and just pull a little bit of saturation back into the uh, smaller details. It's pretty cool. I love precision contrast. It's been around with uh, Topaz for a long time and now it's in Topaz Studio too. So I highly recommend you using it it's a wonderful filter and now on to the next filter now let's look at our last filter and that is we'll come up here to add filter and come to precision detail now it will add detail to your overall image or just the shadows of your image or just the highlights so it'll pick all those different uh, detail areas out for you which is really nice and we also can break it down into small details medium details and large details and we also have a sharpening here and we have some lighting adjustments kind of like we had in the precision contrast which i've already adjusted but these are just mid-tone shadows and highlights and we have a white and a black point that we could use but let's just take a look at overall details first so overall small details these are just the these would be just the smaller areas of detail in the image so watch when i start to move this to the right and see those smaller details start to pop out and you don't want to go too crazy here, but I'm just going to add a little bit right here. And then think of the overall small details boost as kind of like a fine tuning. So you can boost them up or pull them back. So you could get it looking just about right. So say, for instance, if it looked a little, you liked the way the detail looked, but it looked like you had some noise in there, you could just pull this back a little bit and ease off on that one a little bit. And then the overall medium detail, we can bump that up a little bit. And a little bit goes a long way here. And again, we can adjust the overall medium boost if we have to. I don't mess with that too much, but only if I need to tweak it. And then the overall large detail. Let's see what happens if we bring it up a little bit. And again, you just want to use a very little bit here. 
because it can get way, it can get ugly very fast if you're not careful. And of course, sharpening, I've already done sharpening with the AI clear, so I don't need to mess with that. Okay, so let's click the eyeball and see what that has done. So there's the before and after. But just that little bit of a minor adjustment, as you can see here, I just have 0.16 on the small, 0.9 on the, uh, I'm sorry, that's the boost. I pulled it back a little bit, negative 0.09 on the boost. And I have 0.13 on the medium and 0.08, so not a lot there. Now let's go to shadow detail. And let me see, do I want to pull up any shadow detail? And don't be afraid, again, to pull these sliders up just to see what it's doing. Okay, so I might want just a little bit there. Let's try the overall medium. And that's way too much. And I might just go a little bit there. And how about the large? I might, I might ease that one off a little bit to maybe like around a negative 0.05. And let's go to highlights. I don't think we're going to see much happening here in the highlights. Let's pull up the small detail in the highlights and see what happens. Yeah, I'm not seeing a whole lot happening there. So I'm just going to double click it. How about the medium? In the medium, I can see something. See like in the feathers in here, we can see something there. So I might pull up that medium detail just a little bit like that. And let's try the large detail. And I'm seeing a little bit. Can you see right in here when I pull this up? Let's pull this back. Now pull it up. See, how, yeah, see how those feathers pop out a little bit in there, the larger ones. So I might just pull that up just a little bit. Now let's click on the eyeball. Here's the before and here's the after. But that's the precision detail. And don't forget, you also have an overall opacity. So if you went too far, you can equally pull everything back with the opacity, which is a great thing to do and I might pull that back to about an 80 now let's look at the before and the after now let's click on the view or the original right here so we can see the original image there's the original image and there it is after I added detail so pretty cool results so three great filters AI clear precision contrast and precision detail all for adding some nice detail and pop to your images you got to give them a try well, I hope you enjoyed this exploration of detail inside of Topaz Studio 2 today. Okay, so here's what we ended up with by using those three filters here. Not saying that you have to use all three. You can just use one, two, three, however you like to use them, actually. So get creative with it. But let's just uh, drag this over here. So here's the before, and here's the after. It's pretty amazing, wouldn't you say? So there you go exploring detail inside of Topaz Studio 2. If you enjoyed this video today, please like it and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified about it. Well, I want to thank each and every one for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And don't forget, leave comments and questions in the comment section below. I'll see each and every one of you right here next time. But until then, happy editing.